Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Kevin Connors and uh, another podcast. It's going to be a good one today. With I'm here with Lloyd Burrell um, from electricsense.com. Uh, really recommend that you go to his website. He has a ton of information on the dangers of EMFs. And particularly what we're going to talk about today is 5G, the dangers of 5G that's coming out. Just a little background in Lloyd's life. Um, He states this on his website. One day in 2002, he answered his cell phone and soon after developed highly debilitating symptoms when using all types of electromagnetic devices. I'm sure some people listening to that can relate to that. Devices in his home, and his workplace. Lloyd has now made it his life's mission to raise awareness about the dangers of EMF fields and share the remarkable discoveries that he's made on his quest to recover his health once he realized that was a major cause for it. For over 10 years, Lloyd has been speaking at online events, podcasts, radio shows, and hosts his own bi-monthly EMF Health podcast. Highly recommend you listen to that. They're on his website. He's the author of the ebook, Long-Term EMF Protection, and creator of the EMF Health Summit, and founder of the website that we spoke about, electricsense.com. Lloyd, so happy to have you here uh, and to talk about it. And really, I want to concentrate this interview on 5G. A lot of people don't really understand it. I certainly don't fully understand it. Um, There's a lot being hidden from the general public. I think you would uh, state that. So can you explain what 5G is and why it can be dangerous to the human? Mm. The starting point of this conversation, I feel, is that we're, despite what we might have heard um, in mainstream media and in accepted uh, medical circles, is that we are essentially electromagnetic beings. We are energy beings. And, you know, when you've got a problem uh, with your heart, you go for an ECG, measure electrical activity. When you have a problem with your brain, you go for an EEG, measure the electrical activity of your brain. Uh, We know, most people know that nerves are um, communicating via electrical pulses. Some people know that uh, our cell membranes, you know, have a potential. And this is actually what uh, is the determining um, characteristic between life or death is this cell membrane potential. So it's an electrical potential. So we are very clearly electromagnetic beings. So this is where 5G, which is a, the next form of wireless um, technology um, fits into this conversation is because um, we're upping the stakes in terms of our exposure and we have exposure to these electromagnetic fields. And that's what we're really talking about, particularly with 5G, what we're talking, actually talking about very specifically, uh, which again is not being said, is radio frequency microwave radiation. And these devices which we're using, wireless devices, are emitting, receiving radio frequency microwave radiation. And um, so that, comes sometimes can come as a surprise to people when they hear that because the the industry doesn't use those terms obviously it uses well it just uses wireless it uses terms like bluetooth terms like smart um uses really all kinds of terms except really the terms that best describe it and already when we when we use words like radiation then we begin to understand well we begin to think when somebody says radiation to you in connection with your health then already you're asking yourself questions oh hang on a minute so actually when i'm using these devices that i'm being exposed to radiation well yes you are and what you mean radiation like 
nuclear radiation like Fukushima, like Chernobyl, kind of, but not quite because that's slightly different. That's um, a different category of radiation. It's what we call ionizing radiation. Um, and what we're talking about here is non-ionizing radiation. And there's a lot of science pointing to the fact that this, the end result of this non-ionizing radiation, which the telecoms industry and which even our governments are saying is basically safe, that it's only the thermal effects which count. And I'm sorry, it is a bit technical, a bit of a technical subject straight in here. But, um, but what the science is saying is that the end result of these exposures from all these uh, devices which we're using, uh, the cell phones and the, the, the Wi-Fi and, and the Bluetooth and the smart devices, et cetera, is the same as this ionizing radiation. And, and, and uh, so that's what's important. And that's so 5G is the next evolution in this. This is where we're going, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, into this new world of higher connectivity, of uh, greater download speeds between 10 and 100 times faster than 4G, supposedly. That remains to be seen whether that is actually because um, there's hype. There's a lot of hype around this, but actually whether that is possible, I'm not entirely sure that that is uh, possible anywhere on the planet as yet. Um, and um, so, yeah, there is a lot of hype around this. And um, so, five five G is quite simply um, the next evolution in this so uh, EMF. You're uh, saying that five G is equivalent to microwave radiation everybody thinks of microwave you think of your microwave oven in your kitchen that is using a certain type of radiation to heat food much faster than uh you know a convection oven or something um and those waves are hopefully blocked by the wall of your microwave so that they're not being exposed to you though one could measure the waves coming out of your microwave with an emf reader um, and show that microwave ovens are dangerous, but you only have those on for a minute heating your food when you're near a 5G tower, you're being exposed to those 24-7. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, um, so firstly, with regard to when I say microwave, yes, I mean microwave like microwave ovens. So microwave ovens operate at 2.4 gigahertz. And that is actually the same frequency as what most uh, Wi-Fi uh, modem routers uh, operate at. There's some higher frequencies being used now in the five and ten gigahertz range. But yes, when we say so, when we say gigahertz, that means billions of cycles a second. So yeah, that's the first strange thing which we can say. Well, how can we be using? the same frequencies for Wi-Fi as being used in a microwave oven. It's not exactly the same um, characteristics. There's more to it than that. It's more complex, the radiation which we're using for communication because it has data um, laid onto it as well. And that which is not a point in its favor at all. Um, but yes, so it's microwave and we talk, we're talking about frequency and whenever we're talking about EMS, we're talking about frequency and wavelength. And um, these are, these are um, connected and the higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength and vice, vice versa. Um, so yes, it's about microwave uh, radiation. Very clearly, that's what 5G means. And it's 5G in the Internet of Things. And just to be clear, so there's a lot of... Um, talk about 5G and in a way I'm kind of glad that we are talking about it even if it's not in the right way but um, there is a kind of an obsession in some quarters about 5G and about how dangerous it is um, but the real dangers is, are all these EMS which we're being exposed to so it's not just about 5G because 5G is just another layer 5G is just another layer of electro smog so we're surrounded by these man-made frequencies, both wireless and wired. And let's not forget that either, you know, because our homes, offices, schools have wi electrical wiring, which uh, are emitting electric fields, magnetic fields, and dirty electricity. And we're talking about 5G, and there are dangers associated with 5B, but it's, 
it's all these electromagnetic fields which are impacting our health and that's what the science is saying well and i agree you know we can actually measure someone's what's called their phase angle which is a measurement of the um, electrical impulse of their cell membranes and if a person's phase angle decreases they don't have that healthy electrical impulse of their cell membrane you know they're in the process of dying um, there's much published data about that it's not disputable it's not alternative it is standard medicine um, and when you're talking about emf fields that are dangerous to the human body they affect that impulse of your cell membranes and can and you're talking about this cumulative effect of dirty electricity electrical fields that are around us high wires that are around us um, then people will think oh i don't have a cell phone or i don't use my cell phone very often so that i'm protected but really you're not i mean unless you're going to move somewhere where there is you know where is there any place on the planet you could move to be protected maybe some places that are safer than others out of cities but um, we're all being affected by this yes we are all being affected by this and we have been affected by uh, for quite a long time now um really since the the evolution of of wireless uh, by marconi uh, back in the 1930s we've been uh, if you look back at the studies then we have um, we have um, certain evidence which is linking uh, um, these exposures to difficulty um, how it's affecting the uh, bee population the bird population um, and then when radar was introduced we have more uh, science on that also how this um, how these uh, radar operators were being uh, notably how they're getting cataracts on their eyes and so on. And there's researchers that have uh, worked on that and uh, notably uh, Milton Zarat back in the 1950s, he started some research on that and uh, he was told to not dig any deeper if he wants to keep his job basically. And there's a number of cases where that's, that's happened um, over the years. So um, yeah, this is, uh, this is the 5G is new, but the EMFs is not new. It's been around for a long time and it's been uh, impacting our health for a long time. But what is new with the, the, the 5G is, is that we're moving into these higher frequency bands because the existing frequency bands are saturated. So most cell phones work in one to two gigahertz range, something like that. And um, most of the existing consumer bands are sub six gigahertz and now we're going beyond that 10 gigahertz 20 gigahertz even 80 100 gigahertz in different parts of the world um so higher energy and we have used you know this technology has been used before but it's been used for uh in war zones in for crowd control uh these very high frequencies and so what we're doing now is we're deploying these very high frequencies which we don't exactly know what this is going to do for tw on 24 7 exposure but we're beaming down these frequencies from space uh, via satellites over a hundred thousand satellites have been put into space by companies like spacex uh, to deal uh, to beam down this 5g so that we can get this as you say this uh, 5g anywhere on the planet and then we've got these small cells uh, in urban areas uh, so these small antennas uh, for the 5G and the fire and what's also happening with the 5G is we we're bringing we're we're having intensification of the 4G as well, which is a previous generation. Which, um, you know, who knows what's worth the so 5G or the 4G? The difference between the 5G and the 4G, the 5G technology is is like an on-demand technology. So uh, if you don't have a 5G phone, then you're not pulling it into your home. Uh, whereas the 4G um, cell towers are emitting this radiation 24 seven and it's at these lower frequencies which has more penetrative power because we the higher we go in the frequency the less the penetrative power and so that's why they're having to have all these small cells what the industry calls small cells these these uh small antennas uh, everywhere every third or fourth uh, house uh, in certain uh, urban areas but what people the question people have with 5g is that okay so i live 
in uh, you know an urban area and I see a 5G tower at the end of my block, but I don't have a 5G cell phone, so am I protected? So the so here's the thing: is with what we need to focus on is not the 5G; it's the EMFs. We need to look at all the EMFs. And you're speaking to a person who got very sick way before 5G came along from using a cell phone, cell phone exposures, um, and that just came on out the blue, and and this is what I share now is what I learned from this experience. And it's about dealing with all these exposures because, um, and this, and I've been talking with building biologists, scientists, researchers, et cetera, for a long time now uh, about these uh, different uh, issues. And what we're finding is particularly from EMF consultants, building biologists who so going into people's homes who are complaining about 5G is that their homes are full of radiation, of EMFs from other devices, nothing to do with the 5G. And the 5G is an issue, is, is an additional issue, but it's, for many, it's, it's not the most important issue. The most important issue is what's going on in your home. And there's a reason for that is because the way EMFs work, the closer you are to the device, for instance, um, if you have a cell phone, and uh, so I have a cell phone since about three weeks. I've been 19 years without a cell phone and I've got a cell phone now because you can't do it a lot now online without a cell phone, you know, to right. bank security and things like that. Uh, my cell phone is the other end of the corridor switched off. It's not a problem. But if I bring the cell phone in here and I switch it on, take it off airplane mode, then it's a problem. So uh, the thing to remember with these EMFs is distance is your friend. And so, and that's because these EMFs work in an exponential manner. So just by gaining a, a small distance between you and the device, you're exponentially reducing your exposure. And so that means, if you think about that in the other way around, that means everything you have in your home that is electrical is a potential source of EMF. And given that we are moving into this smart world, which goes with the 5G, 5G, IoT, Internet of Things, so it's all this, it's this connectivity, driverless cars, you know, toothbrushes, which uh, send out a signal when you've got any more toothpaste, fridges, which uh, order in the milk when you uh, haven't got enough for your cereal. Um, this is what, what we're uh, moving towards. And all this is done wirelessly, and it's done with uh, radio frequency, microwave radiation, but they don't call it that. They call it smart. And all this is filling your home with this invisible radiation, which again, thousands of studies are linking to a long list of serious diseases, including cancer. So that bridges to the next step is what, and people can understand that um, to a degree. It's not that they have to become EMF specialists, but the biggest thing is that people are gonna say, okay, what do I have to do about it? You mentioned, you know, put your, your smartphone in the other room when you go to bed or turn it off completely, get it out of there, put it in a Faraday cage, um, put a cover on your uh, router, your Wi-Fi, turn it off at night, don't, have your, don't use a Wi-Fi at home. What are some practical steps that a person can take um, without having somebody come in their house and check all their EMFs okay. and getting an EMF reader? So I'll give you three things. I'll, I'd like to give you three things if I can. First thing is I'll talk about the cell phone, and then I'll talk about the Wi-Fi, and then I'll talk about electricity, because those are three areas which are impacting everybody. And these are three things which you can do, which don't really cost any money. A lot of this doesn't cost money, so there are some higher-end solutions, uh, but a lot of what you can do is free. So the first thing is with your cell phone. It's how you use your cell phone, because for many people, this is a major source of emf exposures they're going oh my god the 5g it's arriving but they're walking around with their cell phone switched on they're walking around using their cell phone like this so that's the first recommendation don't put your cell phone next to your brain you want to talk about cancer well that's where the research is very strong linking cell phones to uh, cancer uh, brain cancer brain tumors um, ipsilateral tumors tumors on the same side of the head it's your mm. cell phone. How curious is that? Yeah. Um, uh, tumors where people are putting, women putting cell phones in their bras, tumors in exactly the same position as the uh, cell phone in the bra. 
So, uh, can, uh, and, and cancer. Um, so, uh, with a cell phone, it's uh, it's using your it, it, again back to distance is your friend. Think about that distance. When you think about EMFs, distance is your friend. Putting maximum distance between you and the phone. That's what you need to do. And when you're using, so how can you do that when you're using it? Well, uh, either you put it on speakerphone, that's not always possible, I know, or you use what's called an air tube headset. And an air tube headset, that's it, that's what you're using, um, has a little bit of air tube in it, as it says, as the name suggests, in the wire, which breaks the signal because otherwise that wire can attract the ambient radiation in the room and beam it up to your brain and therefore act as an antenna basically and amplify this radiation effect that is already there in the environment because as you, you know as we keep saying we're surrounded even though we can't see it most people can't feel it it doesn't mean you're not being impacted and again that's what the science says very important point is that these exposures affect everybody it's not because you can't feel it that they're not impacting you your cells can feel it this is what the science is saying. Um, so using an air tube headset, using speakerphone, using airplane mode as much as possible and avoiding using uh, your cell phone in your car like a Faraday cage. It's a bit like the microwave oven we we're talking about earlier. Um, these are just some simple steps. Text don't talk. Don't go silly on the texting either. Um, we want to be using wired connections preferably and cell phones might be sexy and seductive but they're dangerous. They're using radio frequency, microwave radiation. That's why we should not be abusing of them, particularly not our children. So that's the first thing very, very quickly uh, on uh, cell phones. Second thing is with regard to Wi-Fi, everybody's got Wi-Fi. I know it's great. I don't. I never had because I got sick before the Wi-Fi arrived. Yeah. Um, so the Wi-Fi, what I recommend, first recommendation is just switch the Wi-Fi off at night. Who needs Wi-Fi when they're sleeping? That's when your body is most vulnerable. It's at night when your body heals. It's when your cells regenerate, rejuvenate, detoxify. So you want you don't want to be exposing yourself to that radiation at night, given everything we know about how these uh, exposures impact our health, notably impact the production of this very important um, hormone called melatonin. A lot of research on that. Um, and if we want to take it further with the Wi-Fi, so just unplugging it, that's what I recommend. Unplug this modem router, as I say with my British accent. Uh, unplug the modem router at night. And if you want to go a step further for $10, buy one of those little mechanical timers. You know, like that idea came to me about 10 years ago, you know, like the Christmas tree timer. Sure. Uh, use one of them. Use you Great know, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like for burglars, you know, um, use one of those to switch it on and off rather than going in the settings and doing all that. Because as soon as there's an, up, an upgrade, then the, it will go back to default and you get the Wi-Fi again. And uh, third thing. Uh, so just to finish on the Wi-Fi, to take this further, then my recommendation is to go hardwired. OK, so wires aren't pretty. But wires are really a superior form of uh, communication and they're safe. Um, and this is why 5G, you know, for the minute, you know, with the five, we can never do nearly as fast wirelessly, despite what industry might be telling us, as we can wired. You know, wired and fiber optics is still way, way faster and way safer. Um, and then thirdly, so go, go wired if you can, Ethernet. Replace the Wi-Fi with the uh, wired internet connection. And then thirdly, just to go back to so there's one room which is the most important room in your home and i'm sure you know what that is that's your bedroom and again we're back to the bedroom because it's not just an hour you know a place where you get some kip and some shot eye and uh it's just something you have to do no this is essential it's a foundation it's a pillar of health sleep quality sleep and you cannot get quality sleep if you're exposed to EMFs 24-7. And there's all kinds of EMFs in the average bedroom, I can tell you. There's uh, magnetic, there's the four kinds. So there's four kinds of EMFs. There's a radio frequency radiation, which we've been talking about right from the beginning, which is 5G and the wireless and everything else. Uh, there's the electric fields. So as soon as you've got wiring, you've got electric fields. Whether you have something switched on or not, you can be in total yeah. darkness, but you're in an electric field. You're sleeping in an electric field. It's creating electrical tension in your body. And the third kind is magnetic fields. 
So if everything's switched off, you shouldn't be in a magnetic field unless maybe there's a wiring error, which is very common. Also, wiring errors are extremely common. Up to two thirds of homes have wiring errors. Um, and then uh, fourthly is dirty electricity which, uh, boy, I mean, this is going to be a lot for people if they've never heard about this, but uh, our homes are now filled with dirty electricity. It sounds evil and nasty, it is. And there are links again with this dirty electricity to cancer, just that in itself. I mean, we've got uh, studies um, linking these exposures in schools, terrible, um, with terrible outcomes um, with um, uh, these exposures of dirty electricity, uh, these uh, frequencies which are on the electrical wiring, which shouldn't be. In fact, and the problem is, and you might be going, well, yeah, but if it's on electrical wiring, that's okay, because it's on the wire, yeah? Well, no, it's, it doesn't stay on the wire because most homes have Romex plastic coated wiring, and it does not contain the uh, EMFs, okay? Unless you have special shielded wiring. Um, so most homes, 90% of homes have got this ordinary wiring and this dirty electricity permeates out. So where I'm going with this third recommendation is to, for a week, if possible, go to your breaker panel and switch off the electrical circuit for your bedroom. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that this is going to solve all your problems, make you feel better, and that instantly, you know, you'll sleep like a baby. Uh, but try it. Because again, because we can have imbalances in electrical uh, system in your home's electrical wiring system, which can mean we can you can create more EMFs than would have otherwise be the case. Uh, so you try it. You know, as always, you listen to your body, suck it and see, and try it for seven days. And uh, if you find after the seven days it's better, then we'd look for a more longer term solution, which is like what I have, which is an automated shut off at night. And I just go to bed and there's no yeah, magnetic fields, electric fields, all dirty electricity. So you, your power is completely shut off breaker panel to your bedroom yeah, at night. It is. So I use, oh. so I'm in Europe. So, and there's a company called Gigahertz Solutions, which make, uh, which are out of Germany and they make like, you know, all the building biologists and people, the top people are using the Gigahertz Solutions meters. And I have a few cheapy ones, um, but I mean, we've got high end meters, you know, in the thousands of dollars, which they produce. And they also produce these auto cutoffs, which you need to get an electrician to install. Um, but in, in the US, so it, it just what happens with me is I go to bed and I switch the light out and it switches the circuit off. And then if I want to go up for a, a pee in the middle of the night, I can. I just switch the light on and the, uh, the circuit is reactivated by me switching the light on and it's so it's yeah it's and that is uh, what i use with gigahertz solutions but uh it's a company called emf so it's uh, emf sleep safe i believe they're called who manufacture these switches which are kind of plug and play it is for an electrician to do so you can't do it you know just if you're good with electricity i don't recommend it get an electrician to do it but it's easy to do easy to install now, you have a plethora of this information on your website. So that data that you just discussed, is that available at electricsense.com? Of course. Of course. Uh, so I'm going to point everybody to that. We'll have data so that people can look at your website. It's uh, you have wonderful interviews, I just want to say, and gr Thank great you. source of information there out there. Um, Back to what we just started this on. There's so many people that out there in in the world that poo-poo this until they end up with a serious disease, and then they have to start really looking at causes and and realize that they're affected by this. Um, in a lot of things that we talk about, people there's certain people that are much more uh negatively affected by EMFs than others. Some of it has to do with a certain family of genes that if you have defects on, you're gonna be more affected. Some of it has to do, a uh, big part of it has to do if you have any inflammation in the brain uh, and any microglial damage, that's a certain type of cell in your brain. And that can be caused from concussion, that can be caused from a, a, like an infection like Lyme disease, anything that could cause an increase inflammation in the brain, that person is going to be 
much um, more susceptible to the negative effects of EMFs. But um, um, what we have said for a long time is that the, the rise of early dementias and Alzheimer's disease, it's certainly tied to toxin exposure, but you cannot uh, eliminate the negative effects and the accumulative effects of toxins plus EMFs and how that's affecting our brain because these EMFs are going right through our body. They're going right through our brain. There's nothing stopping them. Your skull is not protecting you. Um, and what it's doing to neural tissue that has very little space for excess inflammation is just downright scary. Yes. Um, so just to bounce back on that, one of the um, things uh, which is very clear from the research, and this is research dating back to the 1970s, is that radio frequency microwave exposures as used uh, by cell phones and similar devices um, have the ability to damage the blood-brain barrier. And uh, this is uh, 1970s research, and this which has been replicated over and over and over again. Um, and the blood-brain barrier is very important uh, for keeping uh, toxins out, keeping nutrients in. And once that barrier is damaged, um, then there is going to be there is possibly a whole load of consequences downstream from that in terms of um, you know medical outcomes, in terms of symptoms, in terms of what I call diseases, and in terms of uh, literal uh, diseases. Um, so um, I don't think we can underestimate just that, uh, just that aspect of it. And, and again, there is a lot of science behind. Uh, so one of the, um, one of the uh, bits of science which is particularly clear is that which has been brought, um, which is a work by Dr. Martin Paul on these voltage gated calcium channels which are all over our body in the cells um, and it's where there are concentrations of these voltage gated calcium channels what we know is that these calcium channels um, that the normal operation is is upset by these emf exposures and that calcium is leaking into the cells and everything that that means which is in a nutshell premature aging and then possibly diseases and we have a concentration of these calcium channels in our brains. And so this is, again, uh, another. Um, so there's lots of um, lots of different um, avenues, lots of different ways that the, the EMFs uh, are affecting us, which the, the literature is showing uh, really very clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And the scary thing is, is like you said, it's not going to necessarily, I mean, in, in one sense, I want to be careful saying this, it was a huge blessing that you got sick. Um, not only did it move you towards your life's work here, but um, most people won't experience that. They'll end up with a disease down the road, like Alzheimer's disease in their 60s. Never, never put the two things together, that it was because of EMF exposure plus toxic exposure. So they damaged the blood brain barrier. Toxins could get into the brain, cause these glial cell damage and uh, tangles and, and led to the disease of Alzheimer's, never putting the two things together. And the sad thing is, is that once you go down that road and you have damaged microglial cells, many of those are not fixable. Even if you stop the EMF exposure and you get rid of the toxins, you can maybe slow the disease process at that point, but now you can't correct it. So being as proactive as possible in, in, um, in, in taking care of EMF exposure that you are not currently feeling um, is going to pay dividends down the road. And that's really what your site is about, is educating people. It is, you know, um, I'm guessing the people that are watching this, well, they're perhaps people um, that have a story with cancer, and then they're just perhaps people that are health conscious. And I see so many people that are supposedly health conscious, and you know they're working out and they're eating the right foods and they're putting all these expensive pills and potions into their body, um, and yet they're not. They're completely overlooking this uh, really basic 
toxin. It's a killer. You know, these EMFs are a killer. Um, and it, they're slowly killing you. You know, this is what, again, what the science is saying. Um, and it's not just the EMFs, obviously. It's the EMFs with the other toxins. And we've got studies on this also, how the EMFs interact uh, with other toxins, notably with heavy metals, um, which there is obviously our bodies, most people's bodies are saturated with heavy metals, unless you've done some specific uh, detox, um, then, uh, you know, most people have got metal fillings and the food that we eat. Most people eat, you know, a lot of people eat processed foods and um, foods which, uh, pati particularly in the US, I know, you know, the, the, the soil is uh, particularly um, heavy uh, in, 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 in these uh, toxins. Uh, so it's this, it's this um, synergistic effect, it's the, the MFs plus everything else. Yeah. Uh, which is and also it's not I mean it's um, you know the viruses we'll not get into that but anyway the viruses we'll talk about the, the vaccines we'll not talk about the heavy that. metals and the vaccines <laughs> but it's um, <laughs> it's it's some you know the mental um, uh, the mental uh, toxins the emotional toxins it's all of this and it's all working together because you know when it happened to me I was living the dream you know we just moved to France with my wife and just start my own business and everything was going very well um, and then boom this came out of the blue and um, and so, but there were some other things going on, obviously, in the background in my life, which I wasn't aware of. And it's so it's always EMFs and something else. It's never one. To, it's really one toxin in sure. isolation. Sure. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'd love to have you on again. We could talk about so many of these little pieces in detail. Um, we're going to be pointing people to your website, electricsense.com. You are physically in France, is that right? That is correct. That's great. Well, it's just <laughs> so neat how we can connect worldwide. This is not a problem in one part of the world. It's everywhere. Like you said, satellites are beaming this down at us. It's something you can run, but you really cannot hide. There are certain things you could do to protect. Final note? Uh, yes. Uh, so if I could, I just wanted to say that I am actually... Um, putting on a an online event which is free which is called the emf house summit uh and it's from the 12th of july the 12th to the 19th of july with over 40 um experts on this question and um, we really go deep on the science and the solutions every single expert we talk about solutions so it's very solutions or oriented and so absolutely uh, check that out perhaps you'll we'll put that information that. up as well that's up on your website as well it's um, on my website and um yes uh, we can send you a link on that which you can include on in the show notes all right well thank you so much again lloyd again this is dr connor's thanks for being part of our podcast again today thank you so much dr connor thank you all right bye-bye bye-bye